why are they doing that? You know, you'd expect it in an 80 year old with an immune system that doesn't work very well and lots of other comorbidities like diabetes and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But there's got to be something unique about this one subset of the population that seems to get um, the horrible sequela. We think that, or at least I think, that the virus doesn't live very long in you. I think the immune system deals with it. But then in these patients, these unique patients, it goes crazy. The immune system can't stop it. It can't rein itself in. And then it goes nuts and it's the immune response of the cytokine storm that causes the inflammation, the, the, the lung coating of this jelly-like stuff that so you can't oxygenate, the whole cytokine inflammation storm in the brain and the body and all the organs. And the reason I think that is that in my autoimmune patients that go along for decades with no uh, flares or anything, they get something simple like uh, scarlet fever or strep throat or something. You kill the strep throat with antibiotics. You think, okay, things cool. And then suddenly they have this huge flare of their multiple sclerosis or their Sjogren syndrome, they get huge ulcers on their legs. Their, their autoimmune disease goes nuts. So in those patients, their, their genetic predisposition to an autoimmune disease that was fairly quiescent most of the time, um, once it's challenged in a certain way, then goes crazy and they have this manifestation of their autoimmune disease and then they have to get treatment for their autoimmune disease, whether it was prednisone or chemotherapy or something. I think the same thing happens in this, because a virus might not last very long, but the autoimmune disease in this subset of the population triggers, or your, the virus triggers the immune system to go crazy. What about a normal patient that has nothing to do with COVID? What about a patient that's been testing negative for all autoimmune stuff for years when we've seen them, and then all of a sudden they get RA? We've been testing them for RA for 10 years, and now all of a sudden they're 56 and they get it. Right. What, what causes that? Uh, the same thing. Something triggers off some, something in their um, genetics that flips that switch on. So here's the other caveat. This is fun. Because the thing that we know keeps autoimmune disease quiescent and, and from flaring is vitamin D. And vitamin D seems to be like the traffic cop that says, hey, you know, that's a cancer cell, go get it. Because if you just read, you know, back in the early 2000s, every cancer was, was prevented or suppressed by vitamin D. So we know pancreatic, breast, prostate, all of that, colon. So on the other end of that, we know that high dose vitamin D suppresses flares of autoimmune disease like rheumatoid and multiple sclerosis. And you can put multiple sclerosis into remission, uh, partial remission at least, with high dose vitamin D. So here we've got COVID-19. And now there's hundreds of papers now that talk about how vitamin D stops the, the inflammatory cytokine storm in COVID-19. COVID it's doing exactly what we would think it would do. So if you take all of that history of autoimmune disease and vitamin D, cancer and vitamin D, and vitamin D's role in the immune system regulation, keeping it going from fairly quiescent to this huge cytokine inflammation storm, it's going to do the same thing in this thing. And that's why I think the sequela that puts you in the ICU with tubes mm -hmm. is an inflammatory response to this auto, to an autoimmune inflammatory response of a system that's out of control and it's in the genes, just like an autoimmune disease is in the genes. Just like they're fine, something triggers off and then they get rheumatoid. And then all of a sudden they're diagnosed. Yeah. Interesting. So I think eventually what we're gonna find is that people are gonna look at the genome and they're gonna say, huh, these certain people with this little gene mutation seem to be the ones that even in their 40s go to the ICU with tubes. And the rest of us are fine. Because most of us are fine. Mm -hmm. Another question? 
is the genome expression only after a specific age? Because you see a lot of kids aren't necessarily um, showing up and, and passing away or, or having a, a, a severe response, or at least that's my take on it. But are, are older individuals who have a more, I guess, a further along uh, lifespan mm -hmm. who, who might have that genetic predisposition, are they more at risk because they're older? Or do children? I don't know. That's where I guess I'm. Does age stuck. affect the does genome? Does age affect, yeah. Age, age probably does affect the genome because you get a lot more mutations the older you get. But in the older population, almost nobody checks the vitamin D level. Mm. So they're all deficient. You know, I get a patient in the, into the rehab hospital, they never got a vitamin D level of nine. Yeah, we've had nine. sevens. We've had. <laughs> and it should be like 80 or 90. And okay. nobody bothered to check. So here's this it immune not. just set up for that's why uh, we have an immune sign. system that because instead of driving them. toward the antibodies, so the which is what the forces that, the immune system to go toward making antibodies, it goes toward making inflammation so products kind of and in. the cytokines, and then not if you choose not to. And we usually follow your guidelines over here and not in the lesser inflammatory. So the old people, if nobody puts them on D in a nursing home, then everybody. You know, I mean, they're not the top, exactly at the beach like sun tanning and getting a lot of D. <laughs> and I don't know that I've ever seen an, a 90-year-old with a tan. Yeah, as long as you're feeling good and line. you haven't been diagnosed or so, exposed that you're aware of. So I think that's part of the problem, but I think there's also some genetic mutations that occur over time, and they're more subject to, to those changes. Mm. Anyway, that's my theory. I haven't seen anybody write about it yet. But I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. But... If you want to make up for it, at least all of us need to have vitamin D levels of at least 90.